Hey guys, so welcome back on the pod. So today I'm in a studio in New York City and I have a very special guest, Dr. Erin Gilbert. She's a board certified dermatologist and neuroscientist based in New York City. Hi. Hello. Thanks for having me. It is so good to see you. I feel like last time I saw you, it was like, it was a blur. I'm like, that was January, right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It was January. Long time ago. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your background and like how you got into? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so my background is actually kind of interesting, I think. So I actually was not a medical student. Um, I was actually an art history major. So I was studying art history. I was working at an art gallery. And I did a total 180 yeah. and went to study medicine and, in fact, get a PhD mm. and then do dermatology. Yeah. So what caused that turnaround is that I really found that I wanted to help people and be engaged with them rather than selling them art. Mm. That's like how you got into it. I did not I yeah. did not see that like at yeah. all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I was at an art gallery, yeah. kind of realized that I wanted to do medicine, went to a post back pre-med, you know, program at Columbia. Yeah. And that took like three years. That was like turning my brain around completely. I was like, oh my God. And then essentially what happened out of that? was med school, got invited Mm. to get a PhD in neuroscience, agreed to do it, came out MD, PhD, did derm, hello, here we are today. Wow. That is so interesting because I feel like a lot of like some, like, because I have met like a bunch of dermatologists like through some brands and like they all have like, oh, I always wanted to do this and like I was like, I was an esthetician or whatever and like I like kind of get, yours is like such a different story. Well, the thing that actually I think connects it all yeah. is that being an art historian, yeah. um, that means that I studied the aesthetic. Yeah. So I was studying the look. I was studying sculpture mm-hmm. and paintings. So now when you look at the fact that I'm doing cosmetic dermatology. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, it's kind of like, it's like a canvas. People exactly. are like Exactly. So what that means is what I bring to that yeah. is I bring my eye to what I'm doing, you know, with my patients. Yeah. Um, and thankfully, I was looking at art that actually was, like, really tasteful and proportionate. Mm. <laughs> so I don't like making people look crazy. Right. right. <laughs> so what would you say, like, the common things that people are, like, always trying to, like, fix up themselves? Like, the first things. I know it's, like, I feel like dermatology is such a vast thing. It's, like, people do so many things. And, like, I feel like also some derms, they have, like kind of like a focus, right? Like they do yeah. specific things. Yeah. What is like the common things that people are trying to fix these days? Well, you know, I think that now that there's so much available, uh-huh. um, I think there's stuff that ranging from lasers, microneedling, you know, PRP, yeah. skincare regimens, um, fillers, toxins, there's all of this stuff available. Yeah. So people essentially come and I think the thing that most people want to do is either learn about their skincare regimen Mm. and how to take care of their skin, Mm. uh, and that's all ages. Yeah. Um, And the other thing is that they want to kind of make themselves look younger, and sometimes this is because they feel like they just look tired, um, and they just kind of want to look more, like, refreshed. And so this is what they're really coming for. Yeah. So now... I get some really young patients in who've read some magazine How How article. Are we about? Oh my god, like 29, 30. Wait, <laughs> you consider oh my god. See, like I feel like I like at, because I'm 27 now and I'm like, I feel old. Like after 25, I'm like, this is this is bad. Like yeah. I feel absolutely old. <laughs> because like I feel like a lot of the times, especially like in the creator industries, like there are so many people who are so much younger than you and like you immediately like you're like, oh my time has passed. So right. <laughs> I see right. how you say it. that's young. Right. So that's never the case. First of all, <laughs> guys, that is never the case. Your time has not passed. Um so the thing that I think is really important when they come in, what I tell them is this. I, I take a serious look at them. Mm. So it's not as if I'm not looking at them. Yeah. Um, in some cases, there is a place and a role for like preventative things, just like like neuromodulators, a.k.a. Botox and all of its friends. Okay. Um, so there is a role for that, particularly in people that are starting to get like lines when they're frowning, yeah. smiling. Yeah. Um, so there's a place for that. Um, and But for people that come in and they have nothing, yeah. I literally am like, thanks so much buy because it's just for me I'm not not about like making the money off of them Mm -hmm. it really is about me wanting to offer them something that they need so however 
Um, what I find is that um, people also, uh, they come in for basically asking about skincare regimens. And that's kind of a great thing to be able to do because you can then like construct something for them mm -hmm. and also always throw on the sunscreen, of course. And that's another debate, which I can get into. Yeah, we're going to get into that. We're yeah. Definitely gonna get but, into um, that. but yeah, I mean, I think the main thing is, uh, I think it's really kind of looking at what's appropriate. So for example, yes, I started doing Botox when I was 30. Okay. Yes. Um, and I am now 50. So there is an advantage in the sense that you don't get these deep lines, you know, so right. I do gradual things all along. So I think there's kind of a maintenance concept that's important. The critical thing that I would tell all of you is do not go overboard. It's just like, there's so many people out there that are going to crazy inject you mm -hmm. and it's like really not the way to go. So you want to find somebody who is like a board certified so it's safe. Mm. Um, and also you're going to do stuff that's like not over the top because that it just doesn't like make you look younger. In fact, when people do stuff that's over the top, it makes them look not only weird, Classic. but also older. Yeah. So it makes them look older, in fact, when they do right. stuff like that. And I just feel like that's the whole point is like I feel like the best way to get something done is like looks like nothing has been done like, exactly right like because I feel right. like if it looks like something has been done then like that kind of lost the whole purpose behind exactly that. and so most people who come to me even if it's just for like uh botox or whatever yeah. um they people are like the reaction is oh my god like did you go on vacation or like <laughs> you look really rested like <laughs> that is your goal mm -hmm. is you want to make people look like a better version of themselves. You don't want to make them look like, you know, Hollywood, like too plumped up. Right. Never exactly. the goal. Never and the I goal. feel like also the other thing is like, that's why sometimes I get annoyed by that. I feel like you still need to have some expressions in your face. Like, like yeah. Because I feel like sometimes people go so overboard that like, even when they are making some expression, I'm like, I cannot tell if you're angry or I cannot tell if you're like happy because I don't see <laughs> like, anything happening on your forehead or on your sides like i don't know what's going on i think that i think that that can be the case um even if you have a lot of um like for actors you know what i mean because they need to well, like somewhat the, have something the, yeah the the actors that i do i'm really light with so right. that they can still have expression um but, you know, there's actually, um, you can do it in such a way that it's not over the top. Uh -huh. um, they, you can do it in such a way that people still have movement, which is really critical. There's also a concept that's very interesting called the fiducian smile. Yes. Getting technical here. <laughs> okay. Bear Explain with to me, us. guys. Bear <laughs> with me, guys. The fiducian smile, the concept there is that people actually have an express have an expression with their eyes. Uh -huh. So you can kind of tell regardless of what's going on if they're smiling. Now, I'm not a fan of over injecting people such that they don't move. Yeah. But I think again, it's really like looking at the face holistically yeah. and looking at how the pieces all go together. Mm. So if you've got someone who's over, overly frozen and then they have these huge lips, these huge cheekbones, you're just like, where did, which planet did this alien walk in from? <laughs> Where do they land from? <laughs> right. You know, so that I think is important to balance. I, I got you. What would you say like something that has like kind of evolved over the years in like the industry that like you would say like, oh, that's kind of so exciting and like promising that like, in the right. future that people right. can. So I, I really feel like um, a couple of things. One is that we're getting a lot of newer fillers and a lot like Europe had this incredible variety. Can you explain that to like those fillers? Because there's like some, you know, there's like two different kinds of fillers. Some of them say like they dissolve naturally some. Yes. Okay. So hyaluronic acid uh -huh. um, is one of the uh, fillers that dissolves. Yes. Um, and it dissolves in about, any, it depends on the person. If the person's more physically active and thin, actually, commonly, like runners, mm -hmm. uh, it'll be about four months, five months, normal people, like maybe six, seven. And then there are other fillers that are hyaluronic acid that are sort of firmer, mm -hmm. and those will actually be like like uh, 12 months. Got it. Okay, got so it. that's a category. Other categories, like stimulate your own collagen synthesis. Yes. And so those guys yeah. actually cause, like, it takes longer for them to have an effect. Yes. Um, but then when they do, it's actually your own collagen. Mm. So that's a different category. Wait, okay. Since you're talking about collagen, because someone asked the question too, because I know some people say like, even if you take collagen, that doesn't necessarily help with it. How does the collagen help? Let's just say, because I know over time, as we get older, our body naturally stops producing collagen. 
is taking helps or it needs to be injected to get or right. like is the does the product that says like collagen moisturizer or whatever does that actually do anything good question okay so um so with age you basically get a reduction in the percentage of collagen mm -hmm. that you're making yeah and then you also have a an increase in the amount of collagen that's being broken down yeah no fun because you're getting <laughs> decreased production uh, yeah. and you're getting increased degradation eh. Not good. Um, so that's happening. Okay, now in terms of what we can do, injection, yeah. great. Stimulation, great. Yeah. Um, oral collagen. I speak at conferences, and this was always a question for me because I did like nutraceutical talks, yeah. right? Like, what does it do? Okay, my own experience is that actually it does help. Mm -hmm. um, and there are particular brands that I like, and you know, it actually does help. So I find when I do it, I actually recommend it to my patients. You do, and yeah. I find that it actually does help. And I actually, nerd wise, because I'm a PhD, looked up papers, and there was studies on, you know, I'm going to have to say it, mice. Yeah. <laughs> and no animal rights, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and then essentially what they found is that the collagen that they tagged wound up in the skin. Yes. So they ate it, and then it wound up in the skin, oh. meaning that it actually does get there. Oh, Is it I a see. significant enough amount? Mounds. I'm not sure. Mm. I just know, like in my own, um, in my own experience using it and having my patients using it, that I do notice a difference. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you would say that like that kind of helps yeah. in that aspect. Yeah. Yeah. Back and I'm going to call out a product, yeah. if I may. Yeah. Am I allowed to? Yes, yeah. Okay, so Vital Proteins is the one that I like. Unflavored. Mm -hmm. Put it in your coffee in the morning. One and done. Or a shake. That's the one I like. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was, because I, I think I've only tried like Vital Proteins once. Yeah. And, like, that I, just happens yeah. to be the one I like. It's, it's also widely available, so it's kind of good. Yeah, that's way. true. It's like everywhere. Yeah. It's like Walmart, yeah. Costco, every place. Yeah. So you can go. Today's podcast is brought to you by our partner, Mint Mobile. So once again, I want to talk about Mint Mobile because I just feel like these days we are spending so much money on so many things, like starting from as little as like groceries to as big purchases like rent. Everything is just so expensive and I just feel like there is no need to spend extra for something that you can find cheaper for the same service or for the same thing. And that's what I love about Mint Mobile. They offer one of the greatest services in terms of the premium wireless phone service plan for literally the same service. They have like the same coverage, same data, same speed, but for less price. And they are built on nation's largest 5G network. The difference is because they sell directly to you, hence they can keep the cost low because there's no retail stores, no salespeople. And the best part I like about them is that like everything is so fast, the process of it, because if you have eSIM technology on your iPhone or on your phone, you can just go to their website and buy the number that you want and you can activate it right away. There it is, you have the phone number. I literally just did that for my business. I am using that phone for my business. Super easy. You can just go to minmobile.com slash WB to use my code and you can just get started for as low as $15 a month. I think that's such a great deal in this economy. So don't forget to take this opportunity. Go to minmobile.com slash WB. Back to what you were saying earlier, like with some patients that like you don't think they necessarily need to get anything done. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like since this podcast, we talk a lot, I talk a lot about that, like mental health and like self-esteem. And like, I think a lot of like how we look or how our skin feels, it's really connected to how we feel about ourselves, especially totally. if you have like prone acne or like acne scars and like stuff like that. Like, how do you, I guess, like have a conversation with your patient that like when you think that like they don't necessarily need it per se, they maybe work, need to work on something else per se, like maybe mm. themselves per se. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you have that conversation? They're like, no, you don't necessarily need this. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. like, how do you have that kind of like a boundary you're setting that like, I don't think you need it right, right. now or like right. you shouldn't do this. Okay. So this is a really important topic yeah. in dermatology because it's aesthetic, right? Yeah, it is. So there are people that come in that actually have sort of a body dysmorphic disorder mm -hmm. yeah. where they think that they need stuff that they actually don't. Yeah. So that's something that you can see. People will come in demanding things and you're like, you look perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Like, why would I do that? There's other patients though who like legitimately have 
you know, concern. Like they've got really bad acne, they have eczema, they have psoriasis. Yeah. Um, they have things that are really affecting how they look, which, you know, are serious derm Yeah, conditions. those are serious things. Right. Yeah. And so, and they come in and, and uh, one of the things that I think is really critical is just like feeling people out. Uh -huh. You have to kind of get a vibe for them. Yeah. And when you see them, you'll really sort of, you know, you'll notice mm -hmm. how they're feeling about things. And it's really important to be sensitive to that. Yeah. Um, because you do, if you're paying attention, mm -hmm. you'll feel the vibe. And whether it's a dysmorphic vibe or whether it's a real concern. So I think the most important thing, first of all, is to be able to address their concerns in a way that they can actually maintain and do yeah. because of their lifestyle. So you got to kind of tailor it. Um, and then you also just have to be a, you have to be a, like a human being. Right. And yeah. you have to not be like, I'm the doctor and you're the patient. Yeah. You know, you kind of have to be like, you know, in it with them. For sure. And sort of like in it with them for the long haul. Have you had like those incidents that maybe like they showed you some pictures from like, I don't know, Instagram and stuff and they're like, well, this girl looks like this and like, how can yes. I look like that? And like, yeah. how do you explain that? Because I feel like some of it also like, because they make it seem like it's natural, but like some of it is also not even like, pla not even like cosmetics. It's like Facetune or like some right. other stuff. That so, I mean, filters. Does that happen a lot or like that's just me thinking? No, that. it doesn't. I mean, to the people that come to me. Yeah, they um, wouldn't be like, oh, I want to look like. <laughs> yeah, it's not. I mean, I think that there, I'm sure that that happens. It doesn't really happen to me. Yeah. Um, But I think the unfortunate thing, quite honestly, uh -huh. is that in this day and age, if you look at the trends mm -hmm. um, in the media and in, you know, Less so in acting. I'm actually glad that a lot of people are getting mellower in acting now. They don't mm -hmm. look as sort of pumped up, plumped yeah. up. Um, but in the media, you know, and you know who I'm talking about, and all of you know who I'm talking about, <clears throat> there are people who yeah. essentially are completely overblown. Yeah. And um, and I think that that is, it's just, a, you know, it's a, it's a point of view of like wanting to kind of like be part of the herd, mm -hmm. but then you got to look at what the herd is. Right. And the herd is kind of wackadoodle. So, you know, this is just my opinion. Um, but if they say that, you know, honestly, it for my style, like, they're not for me. Mm. You know, because my style is not to do that. You know, and you can have a conversation with them like I do, which is like, hey, you know, let's make you look like you, you know, and not somebody different. Exactly. Because I feel like also you can tell sometimes because like the way they get the injections or the way that they get things done they almost kind of look the same. And you're like, why do you want to look like everyone else? Like yeah. No, exactly. That's, that is completely true. And I mean, I got to say, like, when I'm in L.A., yeah. it's like I'm sitting there having lunch and I look this way and I look this way. <laughs> you're like, and the I'm same like, person. I can't escape the lips. <laughs> I can't escape them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that's true. But I think, you know, one of the messages that yeah. I would give people uh -huh. in giving them advice about injectables Mm -hmm. is this i would say like be yourself okay you're yourself there's nobody else mm -hmm. in the universe right now who is you so be yourself you can do procedures to kind of like bring out certain features that you like about yourself but essentially you got to be yourself so um it may sound sort of like you know i don't know but but that's basically what i think mm -hmm. it's just I be authentic you. be you yeah what would you say, because since you talked about that, what are your thoughts about like plastic surgery? Because mm -hmm. I know, I think people sometimes think that like, I think that's just over the top and like yeah. there's no need for that yeah. because it's permanent. You know, when you think about it, it's just, just done and like you cannot necessarily be like, oh, right. I don't want right, to do right, this. Right. It's like, right. that's the same. Like, that's why like kind of, I feel like Botox or fillers is kind of like you're testing the waters and like, if it doesn't work out, it dissolves. Hopefully it's a good one that like yeah. doesn't cause you yeah. anything else. Yeah. Would you say like those are better long term or versus like do something that's just plastic surgery and just be well? Done I was, with it? you know, I've been, I've kind of think about this a lot. Um, so the role of plastic surgery is is certainly it's a good one. Okay, so mm -hmm. there's a role for plastic surgery, um, and one of the things that we always have to think about, and plastic surgeons are actually doing a lot of non invasive procedures, mm -hmm. meaning they're doing Botox and fillers. Um, so they're actually doing that in addition to other stuff like yeah. operating room stuff. Right. Okay. So, but from a dermatologist's point of view, your skin, if you're getting into any of those procedures, 
your skin has to be in good shape and your skin has to be strong. Right. Because if you think about it, you're actually pulling the skin, you're doing different types of things to the skin. And so the skin itself has to be in good it's shape. It's like you have to have a foundation. Exactly. It's like, it's not like you can now make something out of nothing. Exactly. And I think when you wind up, um, there's a lot of non-invasive options right mm -hmm. now, you know, body procedures. Yeah. Um, there's also thread lifting, which is very cool. Oh, like those ones. Like yeah. Which is, you know, thread lifting, which is very cool. It's, it's kind of wild. It's almost like a Is that Bella Hadid? What? Like Bella Hadid, you know, Gigi Hadid's sister. Yeah. Well, there's, there's basically, there are basically a bunch of different companies too that make yeah. them. And so it's, it's wild to watch. I see. So you essentially put them in and then you kind of lift it <laughs> and then you tie a knot. And the great thing is if it's not good, you just... <laughs> Just use you know, your like, oops, scissors and fine. snip it. <laughs> but um, but essentially, yeah, I mean that kind of thing is really cool. Uh -huh, yeah. Um, I like that. So that effectively is like a facelift without getting a facelift. Mm. So I would say, and you also plastic surgery. It's rarer to find a really good plastic surgeon. Yeah. Um, right. So like it's like they're gotta, gonna botch your face. Yeah. You, I mean, they won't botch them, but like you don't want something to look like really like you know huge scar line from facelift. You know, like. It just has to look good, you know, right. too much butt in a butt, you know, <laughs> you know, enhancing procedure. Um, so, and too much liposuction, which then can sometimes make your skin look really thin and right. saggy. Like, mm -hmm. so you have to just find people that are qualified and good and they're out there, but you just have to find people that are good. And just exactly. remember that your skin quality is important. Today's episode is brought to you by Liquid Ivy. Liquid Ivy is a category winning hydration brand fueling your well-being. And their hydration multiplier is the one product you're missing in your daily routine. In just one stick, you get five essential vitamins and two times faster hydration than water alone. Use it first thing in the morning, before a workout, or when you just feel run down, after a long night out, especially after like a lot of alcohol intake, and also on just long flights. I love that it comes in individual packets so you can take it wherever with you and easily just mix it in your water. I keep one in my car, well actually a couple in my car, one in my backpack, one in my like travel bag, so I never run out. Liquid IV partners with leading organizations for innovative solutions to help communities to protect both their water and their futures. To this date, Liquid IV has donated over 39 million servings in 50 plus countries around the world. Get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code WB at checkout. That is 20% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code WB at liquidiv.com. So skin cancer is a huge thing, obviously. You know, everyone yep. is like scared of that. What is like the earlier stages that you were like, oh, let me look out for that? Or like you would say like regularly get tested. Okay. So, um, so... Essentially, I mean, people that have fairer skin, that have a history of like sunburns when mm -hmm. they were younger, that's sort of a classic example of people in which you'd want to look for like melanoma. Uh, um, but everyone's getting constant sun exposure. What I would say essentially is what you want to be looking for is moles that change color mm. um, or get larger or that start bleeding and have a different texture, oh, okay? I so see. that's the first thing. One of the things that nobody mentions that I think is really important, mm -hmm. actually, is um, there's one type of skincare called a basal cell, and oh. you can actually just look at the skin a little bit from yeah. the side, and you'll see that there's a spot that's a little bit shiny. Yeah. And that actually is what basils look like oh, early wow. on. So one shouldn't diagnose themselves, but I'm like, for me, it's like, you know, clear as day when people come in. Um, so any changes in what you have going on with your skin is important. Mm -hmm. One other thing that early um, actinic keratosis feels like essentially something that's a little bit like a grain of sand. Uh -huh. Like you can kind of like sometimes scratch it off, but then it comes back in the same oh, spot. I see. So that's also an early sign, sign that could turn yeah. into skin cancer. Oh. So that's another one. Let me see if I'm missing anything here. Um, I think that's about it. So Got do you want to talk about sunscreen? Yes, let's talk and about prevention? it. prevention? Yes, but first let's see. Uh, because I, that's a huge thing for me because I care so much about like the environment and I care so much about like yeah. the animals and the yep. wildlife. Yep. Mineral and physical or chemical sunscreen. Yep. Right? Can you like start talking about like the difference first? Yeah. Uh, and also yep. say like what is necessarily good for us and good for the nature? <laughs> yeah. Um. So 
All right. So physical sunscreens, two major, like the major difference effectively between them uh, is the ingredients, mm -hmm. as you know. Right. Um, oxybenzone the, or something. Yeah. yeah avabenzone, yeah, oxybenzone. You got it, yeah. um, and so what, what, Physical sunscreens, I mean, what uh, chemical sunscreens do is they effectively, the light um, is absorbed mm -hmm. and they absorb the light. Uh, mineral sunscreens actually, it Shield. bounces off of the mineral, mm -hmm. like the zinc and titanium. Yeah. Um, okay, so what's the difference? Um, I actually have a house in Hawaii. Um, I had become an avid surfer. Um, and I've gotten totally into like reef conservation. Yeah. Um, in Hawaii, it's illegal to use a chemical sunscreen. So oh, you actually, that's so cool. I yeah, didn't know that. Yeah. So you can't do it. Um, and so all you got is physical. So you got like zinc and titanium. Yeah. And the thing that's amazing is right now they've made all these micronized zinc products mm -hmm. that actually look really good. So that you don't look like, you know, this classic white know, surfer, it's which, so sometimes, bad. It's which, like so which sometimes awful. people do just to look cool anyway in the water <laughs> surfing. But, um, but basically, you know, it looks a lot better. So, um, I am going to call out another product line that I really like, which is called Color Science. I uh, like them. And they also have tinted versions, too. They have, like, yeah, tinted, too. Yeah. And, you know, La Roche-Posay has a really great one as well. Um, I love Color Science because I because it's actually – they have a glow version. Yeah. Which I call beautiful sunscreen. Yeah. Because uh, you put it on your skin, and it looks like you're wearing, like, you know, some kind of, like, you know, glow mm -hmm. powder. Yeah. I love that product. Um, they also have something that's really critical that sort of addresses – this issue of uh, reapplication. Yeah. So they have a powder that with a brush uh -huh. that you act, actually can reapply. Oh. Um, so if you have makeup on, it's not like you're going to try to goop on some liquid. Got it, got okay? it. Okay. Or like, you know, fluid. Yeah. So this guy actually has sunscreen in it. So you can just use that brush. Oh. Um, and so that's a really great thing. And yeah. I really like that one. Um, so the just the technology has gotten so much better. That you know you're not looking like super white. I also really like Elta MD. They have a I lot love of, them. I yep. love them. They make yep. pretty decent products. They have. I mean, they, sometimes they're a little white in the beginning, and then that goes away. Fades away. Um, yeah, yeah. But I like it. But I think also like from a cosmetic point of view, I'm a big fan of Color Science. I really yeah. like them. What yeah. do you think about like I know because I don't have partnership with them, so I don't care. Uh, Sun Bum uh, because I have used their mineral sunscreen when I was in Hawaii. It was absolutely awful. I was white everywhere, and I thought like maybe it will like pass. Like you know, I got into the water, and the water was white. <laughs> <laughs> was like calling him. and I was like maybe it's a bad batch or something. Or yeah, well, you know, I mean, I think that I think that um, research and development is a very expensive process, right? And so, also sunscreen is very difficult to get yeah, approved and everything. It's actually, I mean, it's an interesting process. It's been a very interesting process and development. Um, people at L'Oreal, I know, actually have been like involved in the early stages of that, and it's really interesting um, to me as a nerd. Um, but what I would say now is. Yes, there's a lot of junky products. Mm -hmm. And I think, again, this is kind of where you get recommendations from somebody who knows right. what's going on. For sure. Um, and, you know, essentially for like sun, you know, for sunscreens, you're going to get some like, you know, I don't know. You sometimes might get a kid and you're like, okay, like, am I a kid? And then sometimes you're going to get a sexy lady. Um, and so it really depends on like, you know, what, what you're looking for. I would just go to a professional who knows like a derm. Yeah. What about like the, because I've seen, again, this is all TikTok. I feel like I'm getting all my knowledge from TikTok. You know, like they say like how much sunscreen you're applying. Like they have this new rule. Well, I guess like the rule that I've seen is like the three fingers and like three lines. And then you just put it in your face right. and they're like, that shows right. like that's like enough. Right. Is that true? Like right. they're saying like if you would rather apply more sunscreen than like less sunscreen. Like, so like. Yeah. So my answer to that is if you, I mean, and indeed there's sort of a commentary in the derm world. Right. My, my thought is, um, if my thought really honestly is first of all, live and let live. Yeah. So I think if people are like, completely flipped out by the sun, completely paranoid about sun. Like, how fun is that? Right? That's, that's a, not I a good way to live thing life. That I was like, I'm always concerned. I'm like, I want to go have fun. Like, I want to go to yeah. the beach without being like, fuck, like, I forgot my sunscreen. Yeah. Like, I forgot yeah. to put sunscreen. Yeah. yeah. No, so essentially, I mean, it's a balance, right? Right. So what I would say is this whole thing about how many fingers, a teaspoon, a tablespoon. Right. What I would say is um, if you're putting on sunscreen, period, mm -hmm. that's a win. Okay, okay. Yeah. so number one, you're putting on sunscreen, <laughs> pat on the back, 
good job. Yeah. Um, and then you're basically just going to use what's comfortable to you. I mean, if you're going to get slathered with stuff, it's going to get transferred to all your clothes. And mm -hmm. then you're like, oh, I hate this. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Then that's not what you want to do. Yeah. You know, like what you want to do essentially is make something possible for your own use. And so honestly, just do what you can handle. Uh -huh. And that's like, that's better than, I mean, it's sounding very like laissez faire coming from yeah. a dermatologist, <laughs> but I think, I think we, all of pa my patients come in and they're like terrified. Yeah, and because about I feel like sunscreen. media makes us terrified. Like because yes. the amount of shit yes. that goes around. Yes. No, people are terrified about sunscreen. When you're par when you're paranoid and terrified about something, how do you handle it? Yeah. You don't do it. You know, you <laughs> yeah. kind of avoid it or you feel, you know. So I feel like you really have to be like a little chill about yeah. it and be like, it's a win if you're trying to wear sunscreen. Cool. You got it. Yeah, I just feel like I'm trying, essentially. Yeah. yeah. What about, like, uh, do you think that the texture matters? Like, you know, there's some screens that's, like, a stick. Some is, like, powder, I guess, form. Some is, like, the spray. People, I, because people, I mean, or I just heard that, like, spray is, like, sometimes you forget, like, or you're not applying enough. Mm -hmm. Does it matter, honestly, or not necessarily? I think... Uh, I, I know I hate the stick. Because sticks always, like, feel so sticky, too, afterwards. Right. It's like, right. when I touch my skin, I'm like, this is... Yeah, 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 awful. yeah. yeah like, yeah. It, it just yeah. feels so gross. I think that, um, I think that with sticks, uh, sticks are really good for kids, because you can kind of hold them still, and then do that. <laughs> I, see. Okay, so, I can see that So now. that's I can a good see that. thing. Also, for Frankly, if you don't have a mirror, um, and I'm going to get back to the surfing thing because that's part of my life. Yeah. You know, you just basically can just like throw it on mm -hmm, like this right. and you got it. Um, I think for the average person, um, sprays, you got to make sure that you're kind of like rubbing it around because mm -hmm. you don't want to have that like streak of, you know, like sunburn. Yeah. So that's that. Um, and again, I would, th there's one is not better than the other. Per se. It's really, yeah. it's really a matter of. Is it effective? Uh -huh. Does it work for you? Um, and therefore, you're going to do it. Mm. So, and I've actually like heard about. I don't remember the brand, um, but I've seen some like uh, oil-based sunscreens that actually have like a high SPF um, and some shit like. Sh do you like super goop? At what? <laughs> super goop. What are your thoughts? Just honest thoughts. <laughs> super goop. Um, yeah. I love the concept behind it. I think authenticity. I love the lifestyle. <laughs> um, I don't want Gwyneth Paltrow to hate me. Um, okay, you know, one thing. okay, but so it's not actually owned by Gwyneth Paltrow. I made that mistake. So her brand is Goop. Oh, you know what? I made that mistake. That's I made that mistake. Absolutely right. Made... You're so right. I, made that I so made that mistake. Okay, so cut off the cut off the super <laughs> and just leave it as goop. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Um. So I actually have experienced like I've I've played with those products mm. as well. Yeah. Um. Sunscreens. Yes. From them. Um. They're okay. Yeah. I think they're okay. I if, think. Yeah. I mean, if I were gonna really go into it, what I would do is I would use. I would probably for like full body, just get like technical mm -hmm. and go for LDMD if you really want to protect right, yourself. Yeah. They've got a UV sport, which is great. So that's if you're like really something like sorry, something yeah. like affordable. You know what I mean? Because I feel like there are some a lot of uh, yeah. my listeners still, so they're like they're in their twenties or less, like younger than that. Something like they wouldn't like because LTMD is not cheap or anything, I know. but you know what? It so isn't. like what is something affordable you could be like Right. Right. You know, Do you believe in like Korean beauty products or K-beauty stuff? That yeah. Like, no, I think that a lot of them can be really great. Good, I right? actually have just started watching Korean series, like TV <laughs> yeah. series, and they're awesome. I love them. And you, of course, look at the skin. Um, I know. It's like so, so good, so yeah, glowy, so that's, dewy. That's dedication. Right. That's like, like an umbrella yeah. when you're walking down the street, you know, all the time. Um, so, but what I would say about that is, um, you know, I mean, I... Product cost. I feel like there are places to invest Best, right, uh -huh. in products. Um, I also feel like, you know, if you're looking at a sunscreen, it's not going to be as effective, I think. You know, um, some of them are effective. Like stuff that you get. I mean, I'm down for a lot of drugstore stuff. Yeah, I got you. I really mm -hmm. like it. And there are drugstore products. Like Neutrogena? I mean, Per se, there's Modern. a lot of them that I can get into. Like yeah, if you want to talk regimen. Just like I, I just want you to give like a advice, like some like I guess affordable product that someone can in buy. in general. In general, for okay. it, like as a sunscreen. Okay. Yeah. So um, so I am actually a big fan of okay, so critical mm -hmm. um, Neutrogena oil free makeup 
remover. Um, so you can basically come out of like a Halloween situation, <laughs> crazy makeup day with like red, you know, matte red lipstick, yeah. matte black lipstick, crazy eyes. And that thing like gets stuff we'll off just, immediately. Yeah. Okay. So that's one I really like basic. Uh -huh. um, I also really like, I'm a big fan of actually moisturizing all over mm -hmm. um, every day. Um, and so what I do is I actually use Cetaphil cream or yeah. CeraVe cream. Yeah. Um, and in like the jar yeah um so that's one thing that i do um and i've actually used vichy sunscreen is it uh, good I, i've seen I, it but i I've actually never really it. like it and yeah. i use it actually in place of moisturizer sometimes oh, okay so i'll actually put it on the sun exposed areas instead of moisturizer uh -huh. so that's something that i do okay let's move on to some more um cerave am which yeah. has sunscreen in it the cerave products mm -hmm. i really like cerave pm i really like mm. um Vichy products are also great. Yeah. Um, so like they have a mineral 89, which yeah. is a hyaluronic acid product, mm -hmm. which is really great. Mm -hmm. Um, L'Oreal Paris, they have, um, a vitamin C that's great. Um, they also have some moisturizers that are great. Um, yeah. they're like drugstore expensive, but like, you know, affordable in that I got way. you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So those are some that I really like. Oh, I appreciate it. One last thing about this, uh, like the SPF, because I, I am always like getting confused about that too. They say like, you know, lip balms and like some lip balms that have like SPF in it. Mm. Is that necessary per se? You know, here's what I would do. But you know why? Because some SPF, like some lip balms that has SPF in it, especially because like some of them is like, I, I feel like I want to give it a try, but it legit tastes like SPF, yeah. like in your yeah. mouth. Like it's that, like. That is inherently the problem. <laughs> uh, which is really true. Um, so I've had that experience where I've actually tried to use them and I've and had so that like, experience as oh. well. Um, one thing you do want to do is actually make sure your sunscreen is kind of covering this area. Uh -huh. You can actually just put a layer of your sunscreen over your oh. lips oh, okay. and then throw some like lip gloss on mm -hmm. top or whatever, yeah. you know, blot it a little. Yeah. Um, because it, I find most of them really do taste like SPF. Um, but again, make sure you get these upper lines because that also is where you're going to get collagen laws that yeah. like those lines like this so got it so you want to make sure you do that so yeah there are some there are situations where it is valuable yeah um if you're going to be like in the water for mm. example for a long time i keep bringing it back to surfing you look at these <laughs> surfers faces even if they're young oh my god <laughs> it's the so damage, bad the it damage so to the bad. i want to help you people <laughs> Like, particularly the people I love. John John Florence, I want to help you. Nate Florence, I want to help you. Um, you know, Betty Lou Sakura Johnson, I want to be in there with you. Um, because, you know, there's so many things that you can do. But, you know, the lip damage also from the reflection off the water is significant. Mm -hmm. And that's a place where you actually can get skin cancers as well. Oh, that makes so much so, sense. But for the average person who's not in the water all the time, I would just actually rock your sunscreen. And that's um, fine. Over your lips, blot it a little, and then do whatever you're going to do on top. Oh, that's great. No, yeah. that's a very good one. Okay, so lastly, what is like one piece of advice you would give to younger generation to essentially like, I know this is like a very like loaded question, but like, so they can take care of their skin and they won't like, I guess, suffer the consequences later in life. Right, right. Okay, so sunscreen topic again. Yeah. You know, all right. It's not a myth. You should use if it. If <laughs> you have a bad day and you miss it, okay. That's yes. fine. But this is why it's critical to find something. Like if you're using like a BB cream, mm -hmm. switch to like the the tinted uh, sunscreens that are really good. Yeah. Like that color science sun sunscreen is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not too chalky in coloring, yeah. but it really looks, I'm actually wearing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, so I love that. Yeah. Um, so do find a sunscreen that works for you. Um, you're getting out there and doing a little more like sports, going to the beach, put yeah. a little more hardcore stuff on. Yes. It. Okay. So the other thing is a lot of people don't really do things like vitamin C because it's an antioxidant. Um, so you want an antioxidant um, that's going to kind of prevent environmental and UV yeah. damage. Yes. It also tends to really help with like, this is usually they won't say this, yeah. but it actually helps with like pigmentation. Oh, um, that's good. It yeah. really actually does. I mean, I was working uh, with some of the people from L'Oreal and one of the person who works there from Paris, mm -hmm. she kind of did some on one side and not the other. And I was like, wow, that actually Makes really helped. a huge helped. difference, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, so that really works. So antioxidant, sunscreen. 
Um, and then the other thing I would say is you want to just keep your skin like don't like harsh it out by stripping it uh -huh. by put using something that is foaming and too yeah. hard for your skin and it's going to make your skin dry. Got it. Okay. So Got simple's it. fine. You know, like mm -hmm. a vena. So you know what my routine is? Washing my face in the morning. Yeah. Water. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Water. Okay. Yeah. Keep it simple. Um, and then use like a hyaluronic acid if you mm -hmm. want more like, you know, moisturization. Yeah. Fairly, it's fairly simple, mm -hmm. I would say, especially if you're young and just like, you know, just do some, do a little cute makeup, sunscreen, you moisturize well, eye cream, mm -hmm. uh, you know, make sure you're using an eye cream. Yeah. Two that I really like, um, I really like uh, SkinCeuticals, AGE Eye Complex. Yeah. It's one that I like because it doesn't migrate into Is that your how eyes. you say it? I, this whole time I was pronounced SkinCeuticals. <laughs> No, or I you could say sin suticals, <laughs> the sin of, of fixing your skin. No, skin suticals. Um, and they also have really good vitamin Cs. They've been doing that research forever. Mm -hmm. So that's actually nice. But again, there are multiple products on the market. Um, so that's what I would say about it. Um, Got it. Where can everyone find you if they like want to get some like recommendation from a dermatologist? Yep. Especially if they're based in New York City. Yes. Um, so you can find me at www.aarongilbertmd.com. Um, that's where you can find me. Uh, there's a phone number listed there. You can email, probably emailing is the best way to reach me. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, I get back to people. Um, and I'm very, uh, I'm, I spend a lot of time with people. Yeah. So I do only, ex I don't accept insurance. Sorry guys, but like, that's just my thing. Um, but I spend a lot of time with people. Mm -hmm. I spend like an hour to two hours with a patient yeah. because I feel that it's like, my responsibility to get to know them. Yeah. And that way I can actually provide them with what they need. Got it. Got it. Well, yeah. thank you so much for coming You're to welcome. the show. You're welcome. Thank it's you. really good to see you.